in the WWE side of news, there's so much going on, so I'm going to condense it so we don't have the whole podcast just strictly about WWE. I like to break it up for you guys. Um, on WWE's Twitter, they posted a video of Jeff Hardy talking about one of the few things that he has never done that he wants to do is win a Royal Rumble. Now, I've been posting about the Royal Rumble. WWE has been posting about the Royal Rumble and so have others. There is a lot of opinion about this year's men and women's Royal Rumble. But some of the standouts that people want to see win for the men are Drew McIntyre, Big E, um, and Cesaro, and Shinsuke Nakamura, and Roman Reigns and The Fiend. Those are some of the top answers that I've been seeing, um, as well as Keith Lee, and who else was it for the men? Oh yeah, Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns. Um, as on the women's side of things, one of the most popular answers that I was seeing was Bianca Belair. And that's really, really cool. As someone who's newer to the main roster, I think that that's really cool for people to be picking up on her potential, her vibe, and just her overall aesthetic and what she can do going forward. I think that that's so cool. Some of the other answers were Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Liv Morgan, uh, Shayna Baszler, and then a lot of people are really wanting the return of Becky Lynch. And then uh, there was quite a few people wanting Sasha, but they're, you know, in, more interested in seeing what happens between Sasha and Carmella. So there was kind of a little bit of a crossover there. Um, Bailey is getting rave reviews for her talk show on WWE programming called uh, Ding Dong Hello Show. Um, and it featured... Bianca Belair pretty much getting challenged to some sort of physical obstacle course and considering Bianca's background and how she got discovered uh through the WWE that's hilarious uh you know she's like a CrossFit competitor who does obstacles and challenges and all kinds of stuff so that was really funny in my opinion um Wrestlemania they debuted the logo the official logos for Wrestlemania 37 and 38 as well as the locations so next year in 2022 they're planning on a live crowd and it'll be two days two days worth so people are very kind of interested and excited about that and I believe it'll be in Arlington Texas if nothing changes you know pandemic pending <laughs> um this year they moved it back to Florida um and I believe it'll be out of Tampa I want to say um I'll have to double check on that um the logos look really cool although some people say it's still this year still looks like a little too similar to last year's which was Wrestlemania 36 but I think that's all open to debate and opinion I don't think it really matters <laughs> It's still the biggest pay-per-view of the year, the flagship pay-per-view, the ultimate, the mega. <laughs> so I, you know, that is what it is. I don't think anybody's going to be complaining and be like, oh, the logo for the WrestleMania I was on where I won my belt. <laughs> it's like, I don't think anybody says that. So moving on. Um, a lot of people are raving about Alexa Bliss since her return right after the TLC pay-per-view. She was actually trending earlier this week after sh after ending Raw by shooting a fireball into the face of Randy Orton. He did receive minor burns. Um, so I think the trending was well worth it. People were like, what? Um, it was really, really cool. It was almost like shooting out of a Pokeball. <laughs> Um, I think this is a really cool way of pushing the envelope between a PG program versus more of a PG-13 program, uh, which appeals to a wider range of audience. This is definitely the WWE, I think, you know, trying to respond to the request for slightly more mature content to appeal to more people to up ratings during a pandemic when they should have already been going going up. So I think that that's actually really cool. Um, she's trended uh, t two to three weeks in a row. It's crazy. Another person that trended out of nowhere, and I was so excited about this that I had to write an article about it, was Mr. Perfect. He was trending almost 20 years after his death. I think that is crazy. That just shows like the grit and tenacity and the fortitude and the heart and soul that he possessed within this industry. Um, this came about after the WWE posted a tweet uh, for fans to interact with, basically asking them um, what WWE superstar was so great but didn't actually win the WWE title. And a lot of people were saying people like, you know, Owen Hart came up a lot and Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect came up so much that he became trending at the same time that Alexa Bliss was trending. And I thought that was so cool because he paved a way for a lot of people like myself. Um, I gravitated towards Mr. Perfect. His promos were just on a whole new level. His vignettes were just insanely awesome. His wrestling, even his commentary was another level. Like this man was just 
up there with legends greatness you know he just possessed this aura about him that it almost felt like it could grab you through the screen that's how amazing he was from the way he walked to the way he never missed that darn piece of gum to just the way he wrestled and the way he lived life i just think that that's not, that's not something that can be taught you either possess that or you don't plain and simple um so that to me was just amazing i love watching his work i studied him so much just like i studied you know ravishing rick rude paul orndorff i i studied the bejesus out of brian pillman promos um i I, I watched so much stuff, you know, going back to like Sherry Martell and Velvet McIntyre and Princess Victoria, Wendy Richter and Leilani Kai, the Jumping Bomb Angels, you know, I watched ugh, so much, so, so much stuff um, that it really reflects in my work and how I like to approach wrestling. And he is from a generation where they exuded charisma. They all had different characters. They all wrestled different. They all had different mannerisms. They all understood psychology and how to get people over and still be over yourself. It was just such a different time. It made me fall in love with wrestling all over again. 